Greetings gardeners! Today's video is all about how to make cuttings from those prize-winning hibiscus of yours. So if there's anybody out there who likes to grow hibiscus, this one's all about how to make new ones. Well, I was sitting at the kitchen table this morning and trying to look out at the uh, volcanoes in the distance and realized I couldn't do it. Um, I got a red hibiscus poorly placed in my landscape that is eating all of my visibility. And so it's going to be time to do something about that hibiscus. So the long-term solution is remove the hibiscus. Um, probably what I'll do is I'm going to dig the plant up, uh, go ahead and pot it into a large container, and, uh, and after nursing it back to health, I'm going to go ahead and hopefully resell it to somebody who wants a nice large specimen hibiscus. Now to do that, I'm going to have to prune the plant back maybe about halfway anyhow. Um, otherwise it won't take the digging and it's going to suffer badly. So the process of moving this will be first cut plant in two, take off the top half of it, uh, leave some foliage, and then go after the bottom end with a shovel, cut the root ball back. Uh, I do have the time since there's no hurry. What I might do is take the shovel, go all the way around the plant to prune the root ball back in sight, forcing it to regrow in a limited area. And that may just be exactly what I'm going to do with this. Make it a lot easier to take it out later on. But for the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and make some cuttings. Since I see a mistake in my landscaping as just being an opportunity to be able to sell more plants to somebody. Plus, since I'm going to take this one out, and I probably won't move the, the large plant back into my landscape, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grow a bunch of small gallon pot red hibiscus, take and put them over on the other side of the driveway over there where they're not going to get in my view. Uh, but they'll look beautiful. So, basically, uh, being able to propagate the hibiscus successfully is not only worth a certain amount of money to the gardener, but it also allows you to have the flexibility of moving the plant around, taking it out where it's at, and so on. So you get some freedom out of this. So first thing I got here is a pair of pruning shears. I got myself a little cardboard tray. And I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to start to harvest some cuttings. I'm looking for cuttings that are about pencil diameter. So as I... Uh, had mentioned in some previous videos, make sure you know which way down is and which way up is with a cutting. So I'm lining my cuttings up over here in this box, so they're all going one direction for me. Hey, and guess what? Welcome to Eastern Hawaii. The rain just broke out. I was hoping I could get this done before it starts raining. Alrighty, here we go. I've got a whole tray full of cuttings. They're all pointing the right direction. Now I'm going to go ahead and get some medium so we can strike our cuttings. So here we are in the potting shed. Uh, right here in front of me I have a bin full of moistened Pro-Mix. The Pro-Mix is predominantly milled sphagnum peat with uh, perlite in it. My uh, favorite container for striking hibiscus cuttings is a uh, one gallon black plastic nursery pot. Works good. Holds say six to eight cuttings in each pot. So now I'm going to fill these up. I'm not going to go all the way here. Uh, I need some head space inside the pot. The cuttings take much better when you've got a margin like this. It uh, kind of holds the stems up around the side and it, uh, it uh, shelters the cuttings just a little bit so that the lower portion of the cutting is sheltered by the pot. Just make sure you've got some moisture in your medium. Uh, Otherwise, it's going to be hard to wet it later. If it's moist when you get started, it'll wet right away when you put the cuttings in. Well, I have three containers here. I'm sitting at my bench. I have my cuttings sitting here next to me. Most of these cuttings are big enough to make two out of. Uh, we also do not require the flower buds that are on them, so we're going to remove all the flower buds. Um, I'm also going to cut off the softest tip shoot right there, just because it tends to wilt. There we go. So, here we have a cutting, um, and I'm basically just going to divide this in two. Alright, now I could go through the pile and I could cut everything down like this, but instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to do them one at a time. That will keep me from putting them in upside down. And so I'm taking the lower leaf right here, and I'm removing it from the plant. I'm also rubbing off a bud down here, there we go, so that we have two bare stems that are going in underneath the soil. 
Now the important part about striking cuttings is only push them about two-thirds of the way down the pot. Do not push them all the way to the bottom. That doesn't work well. Okay. Well, that one was good for three. One, two, three, right here. All right, so I already have a couple of them in there. I think we can easily get six cuttings in this container. That makes four. There's five. Got four leaves on top. Took off the softest tip end. Stripped off the bottom end over here. I stripped off the lower end. All right. That makes six cuttings in that pot. There we have it. I've got four pots here, six cuttings in each pot, bright red hibiscus. Uh, now since I've got a bunch of different kinds of hibiscus out here, I'm going to have to label the pots. And so there's a variety of ways to do it. I'm going to use a white grease pencil, and I'm just going to write red. Okay. Since I only have a single bright red unvarigated hibiscus in the landscape, now, I do have a variegated red out there, but I can tell the difference with that one because it's got white stripes in the leaves. Okay, so we've got our containers labeled. Yeah. Alright, so, no fertilizer required at this point. The soil medium I'm using here is relatively sterile, so the process itself is quite simple. You make cuttings from your plants, you want to have pieces, maybe a pencil diameter, a little bit bigger, and so about so long as you saw here. Um, some hibiscus, like the native white from Viamia, that one seems to appreciate having cuttings almost the size of a thumb. So, a little experimentation. But most of these evergreen Chinese hibiscus here, um, pencil size cuttings, good size, good rule of pencil, thumb. Now the next step will be Put them out in the rain, water the pots if it's not raining. I'm going to set them in partial shade. I usually use the underside of my benches in the nursery for doing this, or I put them on the back side of a passion vine or someplace where there's light, but it's not real intense because if the light is too intense when you put the cutting out, it's going to burn every leaf right off of it and leave you with a bare stick. Uh, that might happen anyway, even if there's part shade. But you really want to put them into a subdued light area uh, until you start to see roots coming out of the bottom of the container. And when you get the roots coming out, then you're usually ready to do a transplant. Um, if I put six cuttings in a container and two of them die, I still have four. So we didn't waste the space. So there's some insurance by putting in multiples. Um, ordinarily I find that the cuttings actually kind of shelter each other too. If they're put out there one and one and one and one, then the sun lays on them harder. They don't seem to take quite as well as when they're in groups like this. You know, the, the individual plants actually kind of protect each other. Also the rim of the pot, you know, it's, I've left the soil depressed in there so a lot of this cutting is down and out of the light. I know a lot of people use rooting hormones. Um, I don't find I need to use them in most cases. If I have something really exotic, really rare, um, and I know that it responds well to rooting hormones, then I, I will use one. Um, they encourage the roots to come out. More importantly, they will. Uh, they have a mild fungicide in these rooting hormones that will keep any kind of fungus or bacteria from attacking your cutting until it gets started. So there, there are some values to them. Uh, they backfire too. I find that passion vine cuttings don't work well. When you put them in rooting hormone, um, I end up with all the leaves falling off and nothing but roots underneath when I do that. So, uh, In general, in this climate, since our outdoor weather here is very much like your heated greenhouse in New York City or Amsterdam or wherever you might be living, here in Pune, our outdoor climate, as I said, is almost perfect for striking these. The temperature year-round is perfect, the rain falls perfect, we get lots of clouds coming in overhead that kind of shelter the cuttings, you know, and keep them from burning out. Lots of sunlight too, so it's, it's just a perfect space. So I don't really find that I have to go out of my way to do this here. Now if I was still doing this in California or in the Midwest, or I started with it, 
I usually will take my cuttings and put them uh, inside a greenhouse. Uh, that helps. A cold frame is not a bad idea. A shade house works. Some kind of a shelter is usually a good idea. Although they can be struck directly out in the backyard. I recommend you use the uh, shade of a large evergreen tree. Get a big avocado or something underneath out there. Uh, try putting all your cuttings wrapped up underneath my bananas. I used to use uh, do cuttings underneath my bananas a lot. But, uh, and if you're doing them in the cold weather, remember, most cuttings like a little bit of bottom heat to get them growing. So uh, if you're taking cuttings in fall, for instance, in a cool climate, and you want to root them over the winter so you can put them out in the garden in spring, use a heater mat. Put something underneath those cuttings to keep them warm from below, because the warmth will actually encourage the roots to come. Um, otherwise, if you're working, say if you're in Chicago and it's May, hey, go right ahead. Strike your cuttings outdoors in the backyard, put them underneath the shelter of a tree. Uh, make sure they stay moist. So there you have it. How to strike cuttings of a hibiscus. Shaka! Happy gardening!